reconciliation techniques. Now, in my life of 20 years working with Excel, this has been one of the biggest problems most people have. For bank reconciliation, it's not a simple A and B. It's actually four things you're reconciling. You're saying, hey, this debit that's in my bank statement, was it credited in my bank, uh, in my cash? And then this credit that's in my bank statement, was it debited in my cash? And then when you go to cash, you're asking the same question all over again. You're saying, okay, this debit in my cash, in my cash, cash, cash book, this, this debit in my cash book, was it, is, a corresponding credit, is there a corresponding credit in my bank statement? And then this credit in my cash book, is there a corresponding debit in my bank statement? For those non-accountants here, sorry, 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 this is what accountants go through. But it's quite a simple thing. The key thing you need to find is a reference. If you do not have a reference that uniquely identifies a transaction, both in your bank statement and in your cash book, then you have a problem. Yeah? But I'm going to show you a situation where that unique reference doesn't exist and how you can create it. Okay? So for this uh, case study, we basically have a unique reference called reference, which is basically your deposit slip number and your checkbook, check, check, check number. So if I go to the bank, I'm going to ask a question is, this reference, do you, this reference is in my bank statement, do you exist in my cash book? And if you look at it, it does. Can you see? This 208 is reconciling to this. But you can't, that's when you do it manually with your pencil and uh, <laughs> paper. If you had 10,000 or 100,000 rows of this to do, you can't do it manually. You need to use Excel. So the nice thing about Excel is, I always say write one formula, write formulas once. Just write formulas once and replicate. Write formulas once and replicate. So if I write, a, I'm going to write a formula here. I'm going to write the simplest one I know, just so you understand. We're saying, hey, you this reference, do you match a reference in my cash book? And guess what? Excel was created by people that speak English, which is so cool, because most of the functions in Excel are English functions. So if you look at the statement, I said I want to match a reference in my cash book to a reference in my bank statement. The function you need to use is actually called match. Yeah? So I'm going to use match, and I'm going to say, hey, match, can you, I want you to look, can you say look up value? I want you to look at this reference. Okay? That's the look up value. Where should you look for this value? Okay, you should look, look up array. Now in Excel speak, or in data, data speak, array means just take array as either a, a range of data, a list, or a table, all right? So that's array. So I said, okay, look for this reference in somewhere in my cash book. So I'm going to my cash book, and all I'm going to do is highlight the entire column B. Okay, because it's the whole of column B that has my references, right? So when I highlight it, I'm going to press F4. F4 is just to lock. F4, if you look into my formula bar, you would see that I'm locking. I'm pressing F4 and it's locking with the dollar sign. So look at the uh, syntax. We're saying match lookup value. Lookup array is this column, match type. I put a comma. Match type basically means exact match. Because when you're doing reconciliation, you need exact. So I click on exact. Exact match is zero, and I close my bracket, and I enter. Once you enter, I get five. What does five mean? Five means if you go to row five, if you go to row five in your cash book, you will see that reference. Can you see it's in row five? Let me prove that to you. I'm going to insert two rows here. So if I insert two rows here, guess what? What I'm looking for is now in row seven, right? So if I go to bank statement, guess what? You see seven. This is quite a nice way to do it because it identifies where you can find that item in another sheet. So you double click. Now you've done your reconciliation. Why have I finished my reconciliation? Because is there NAs that are my reconcil reconcilable values? NA basically means I can't find this, I can't find this. Right? And if you can't find it, that is your reconciled value. So these are your reconciled values. Now the only thing you need to do next is go to data, filter. Once you go to filter, you filter your recon column by NA. So once you filter your recon column by any, you are now left with those reconcilable values. Now if you're an accountant, you know that in your bank statement, if there is a debit in your bank statement, it basically means you made some payments. 
if there's a debit in your bank statement that you don't know of in your cash book, it means the bank basically withdrew money without you knowing, which is not too good, right? Except when they are legally bound to do that, like VAT, COT. Uh, so you can see it's just mainly COT and VAT. So these, in accounting speak, you can copy this and take it to maybe a recon sheet. A recon sheet and say, okay, bank charges, right? So for bank reconciliation, um, you have four things. You either have credits not recorded, there's a credit in your bank not recorded, or a debit in your bank, uh, uh, or a debit in your cash not recorded, maybe unpresented checks, checks that haven't been presented. So all you do is follow what I just did. You do that match, drag it down, all the NAs you copy and paste into a bucket in your recon. So I copy that, I paste here, paste special values, yeah? I, I can then come, let me just copy this one here. I can filter, I could uh, filter that out. Then you come back and I can copy the items. So let me just filter this blank space out. Then I can highlight the items, maybe this, copy. Take it to my recon. Pay special values. So you only need to do this pasting like four times. And then you would reconcile your entire bank statement. All right? So there we have it. Then, yeah, so we can now follow the same process. And by the end of the day, you would have a reconciled value. And that's how you do reconciliation. Thanks for watching another training video from Deep Brown Consulting. See you in the next video.